what? Gorgeous. Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever applies to you. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Julia. I'm a contemporary singing specialist based in Australia. And today I am checking out Ava with her performance of Falling Free live at the Old Theatre. I have heard this vocalist before, but I cannot wait to dive on into this performance and break break this down for you. So let's let's do this. What gorgeous layers. Oh my. That was, I could just drown in that. That is, that is gorgeous. Oh, I, I've, I've heard her sing before. I don't remember what the song was, but I've heard Ava sing before. And something that stood out to me with her voice is how bright and forward, but she can go in and out of that tone into something that is very breathy. And she makes it seem so easy to do so, especially when she's up in a second register, when she's up doing that high stuff, like what we just heard in this in this second chorus here. I'm loving the layers, the way they've built the tension through just gradually adding things in. There's a there's a sense of repetition in some of the layers, but we're just sitting in like a bed of sound, just just relaxing and floating in this bed of sound. I. I adore these kinds of experiences. I think that they're very expressive and they can have a very visceral reaction uh, to you as a listener. So I'm I'm really enjoying this live performance so far. And I do think that that brightness, that it's almost nasalized in how she approaches it. It's like nasalized and twangy at the same time. So basically her epiglottic fold is curved over to give her twang, but then some of it is propagating through her nasal passage in order to give us this quality in it. Obviously, that's just a basic, a very generic example of the quality. It does not sound like that when she is using it. It's just, it's in there. And I, I, yeah, I find it to be a very consistent part of her tone so far. But this change into something breathy that's a little bit less direct, a little less sharp, how she moves in and out of that, it really cuts through this bed of sound that they're building instrumentally. And I'm I'm very much enjoying it. So we're going to keep going and see what the rest of this live performance has for us.
interrupt the build, but how she's opened up her sound now. You know, I mentioned before, it seems very direct and she goes to breathiness. Now we're getting some more fullness to the harmonics that are in her vocal quality. And we've got an actual belt that's cut through there. That sounds, sounds really cool. Um, and these synths. It's the synths and when the kick drum comes in for me, I'm like, oh, we going, we're going there. <laughs> oh, this is really cool so far. Yeah, hear how that voice just opens up. She's got a bigger, a bigger mouth opening when she goes up to that belt. That's completely normal when you're belting. You kind of want to make sure that you at least have an adequate amount of opening at the mouth. And her tone, we get this warmth in it. That means that her placement is still coming through in the same space, but she's also got other space now that's contributing to the fullness of her of her of her sound so just bear that in mind she has changed her delivery approach from the beginning to now God, if that build, I was, I was waiting for it and I could feel it in my body. I was like, if this doesn't drop into a build, I, I am not going to be satisfied. Give me the build and the drop. You've been teasing us for three and a half minutes. Um, teasing in a good way. Teasing in the way you find enjoyable, one might say. But still... I'm really, really glad that that drop happened. And I found it interesting how we had that demonstration of the fuller belt vocally. And then in this, what sounds like the chorus to me on the U, she's back up into what I would call a length and a dominant sound. So I feel like she's erring more towards like second register, but she's carried up some of those twangy qualities. So I doesn't feel quite as, as full on like the bottom end of the harmonics, if that makes sense. It's very bright and forward and light in a lot of ways whereas when she belts you get uh, there's a fullness to it let me let me see if i can find it and then then we'll have that as a comparison point there we go this bit on the i've been looking for you hear how much it's not a darkness you hear how much space or mass it sounds like there is in this sound That is a completely different setup to what she does here. Cool. Okay, so she's so she's on this D five, and instead of it being a belt, which is in a similar setup to what she's done before, she's in this softer tonality. She's just keeping the twang there. So you wind up feeling like you've got more presence to the sound, but it's not necessarily a mass heavy sound. Does that make sense at all? In her belt, at her vocal fold level, she's got more mass involved. More of the vocal fold is touching for us to get that sense of 
fullness to the harmonics in the timbre, if that makes sense. Because remember, harmonics are not necessarily something that we interpret as pitch. They are things which influence how we interpret the timbre or the quality of the sound that we're listening to. And by quality, I mean the characteristics that make up the quality, not whether it's good or bad. And in this one, we've got a much softer quality, but she's up in the second register because it sounds to me like a thin fold coordination on this you, instead of going you, which is a little bit heavier, but still in the second register versus if I was to use more mass, you, if I was to use sort of a middling mass and erring more towards a length and dominant belt, you, that sort of leaning more towards second register, slightly lighter. Can we hear how already there's a difference in how much mass it sounds like there's in the sound? And for her, I feel like she's going even lighter, even more pingy, I feel. Yeah. All I see. So she can go straight to that breathiness afterwards. Can we feel how there is a different amount of mass in each sound? That's, I guess, what I'm trying to get across within this particular section. We're going to keep going. love that there's like a distortion something's been added the distortion in the layering there I really like it like a little yodel she has going I really like that. Oh, what she did at the end there. I can't tell if she was going for a yodel, but in parts it sounded like she was getting a little bit of a flip between registration to create that sound that she was making. And then other times I thought it just sounded like she was doing something with her vibrato to almost make it into a hammer vibrato, but one that wasn't so consistent pitch-wise. So that you kind of almost have this feeling of rawness and vulnerability in a sound like that. I find it to be very wild and almost tribal sometimes to hear these kinds of vocals 
because I don't necessarily think of them as on their own. I don't think of those kinds of qualities as being particularly beautiful or pure, if that makes sense, as in like a round, pure tone, something that might be considered traditionally more um, beautiful attached to something like a pure tone. It's quite twangy and sharp in a lot of ways, tone wise. And then she applies it in that context and I'm immediately transported out into like trees and bushes and there are giant stone pillars and we need cloaks and things are happening in the village and this is something's origin story. I don't know. It immediately transports me to something that feels a lot more visceral in that way. Feels more raw, feels more vulnerable, feels almost like call of the soul type of thing. That's the feeling that it gives me. And the way I think she's achieving that sound is through a modification of vibrato. How she achieves that sound is not something that I can personally speak to because I don't do that style of vibrato. My vibrato tends to be more on the round side and a little bit more on the consistent side in that way. But no, that was an amazing ending. I loved the build. Tone-wise, we just had more of what I'd already described earlier in different ways. Extensive use of range all throughout this performance. I mean, really, she's just demonstrated. I feel like she's demonstrated at least two octaves. It feels like she's up around a D6. And yes, the big mouth is a necessity. If you've ever watched anyone go into whistle, you would know that their mouth gets really flipping huge. I'm not suggesting she's fully in whistle here. I do think she's just up at the, I suppose, the upper end of her second register because it has similar tonality to what she's already used below. It's just, it's almost like it's just narrowed even more. So you only get that pingy sound coming through her singing. And when she's up on a note like this, the vocal folds are very long and they're very thin in order to be able to give you that kind of that kind of note. I mean, we've extended up onto a D6. That's pretty flipping high. I would definitely pop her if I did. If I had to put her in a vocal category, I'd definitely put her in a soprano category because there's a lightness and a brightness to her tone that she uh, that remains consistent all throughout like the upper end of her range. I feel like she goes between first register and second register pretty darn well and she's able to carry up some of the twangier qualities of first register up into her second register uh, which remains a consistent vocal quality as she ascends as well into playing with different uh, amounts of breathiness when she so chooses to go to something that is slightly breathy. I view her physicality in this kind of performance to also be immensely engaging because she looks engaged. She looks like the emotional intention of her lyrics and her song is coming out in her playing, it's coming out in her body, her facial expressions. This all around for me hit like a few different senses. It hit my visuals, it hit my ears, it hit my soul. I know that's not a sense, but it hit my, it hit the feeling on the inside, that gut feeling that you have about something. That tension release they created through that slow build was just magical. I really enjoyed this performance and Eivor's voice, yeah, that's, that's certainly something I haven't heard a lot of recently of someone who really leans into that brighter tonality and bothers extending all the way up that high. I mean, I, I feel like it was just beautiful little additions and evolutions of the melody we hear at the very beginning from start to finish. That must have been amazing. Being in that crowd, being surrounded by all of that acoustic energy as well, feeling it build within your body because sound waves don't just exist in one spot they propagate so when you're at a live concert those sound waves literally are going into your body I mean lower sound waves of course more going through your body but you're also being surrounded by by frequencies that are mid and high and they move around you it's literally a physical interaction you just can't see it and I think this would be an incredible uh, experience to be in with the kind of space that that is with the amount of music and layers and the kinds of instrumentation just it must have felt incredible anyways that is where i'm going to leave that one today thank you so much for joining me if you did please be sure to give this video a like click the subscribe button and the bell notification beside it for more just like this one as usual i hope you're staying safe i hope you are staying healthy and i'll see you next time bye i am checking out avor with her performance of Falling Free live at the Old Theatre in, oh, I don't know how to pronounce that town, live at the Old Theatre. <laughs>